Hello and thanks for watching this video. In spite of the highfalutin gobbledygook title, which is how it usually appears in textbooks, this uh, concept is very simple indeed. And you're going to see that it can be easily accomplished by any first year calculus student. On the board we have the first two terms of a Taylor series. We really don't need to know anything else about Taylor series. And as you can see, the first two terms are pretty easy to deal with. We only have one first derivative and the functions that we have to use it on are usually quite simple. Now you can see on the right hand side that the two terms relate to the regular equation for a straight line which you have been accustomed to using in your secondary school math algebra class or geometry class before you even learn about calculus. The YO is the output for the GXO and the other term, the derivative term, results in the MX minus XO in brackets. And if we bring the YO onto the other side to keep the Ys together, we end up with the familiar delta expression, which simply means that's the little triangle there, Greek delta symbol. A small change in y is equal to a small change in x multiplied by some constant m, which is usually referred to as the gain of the system. Okay, so let's now take a look at a mechanical or physical system and then we look at an electronic one. First we have a familiar simple pendulum which even people who haven't done physics are familiar with. We simply hang a little weight from the ceiling on a wire or string and when we give it a little touch it goes back and forth. That's called a simple pendulum. Now the physics of it says that the torque or the force exerted is equal to the product of the mass g which is the acceleration due to gravity l which is the length of your wire or string multiplied by the sine of the angle now that's not a linear function because the sine function is certainly not linear but we can linearize it about the point theta zero equals zero. What we're really saying is that when the bob is hanging straight down, it's at rest or equilibrium. Look what we do. When the theta zero is zero, the torque is also zero. And rewriting our first two terms of our Taylor series expansion gives us that formula there where we simply have to find the first derivative of sine and when we do that and we plug in the zero we get cos zero degrees which is simply one and then we get theta minus zero which is simply theta. So this approximation is good up to an angle of 30 degrees at which time we have about a 5% error in our linear approximation versus a proper computation involving the nonlinear equation. Now if we look at our final equation T equals mgl theta, we will say that theta and torque, T, are directly proportional, or T is directly proportional to theta. 
and the mg and l are simply constants. So when we multiply them all together, all we get is a number. Now let us go on to look at how we might use this in an electronic case in our control systems. If we have a power amplifier capable of driving our actuator, whatever it might be, and it has a nonlinear function or curve function, as shown there, basically linear is straight line and everything else is curve. And our great desire to transform curves into some sort of linear approximation has to do with the fact that they're so much easier to work with. So let's linearize around an operating point. In this particular equation, we've chosen to linearize with an input voltage of 1 volt. Of course, we could choose a different operating point, 2 volts, 0.5 volts, and our choice of operating point has to be meaningful within the context of the problem that we're working on and the actual expected values that we will be dealing with. If we linearize around an operating point of one volt, then that means that when we apply a signal to our power amplifier, it will not vary very much above or below a one volt. So therefore, that is why the linear approximation holds. As long as we limit the amplitude of the small signal that we apply to our power amp, we should have a fairly linear behavior on the output. Okay, so we once again write our Taylor series expansion, which as you can see is a very simple matter in this case. And using our delta notation, we say that the small change in V out results from a small change in Vn. And we take our first derivative around the operating point. So, as you can see, it works out to a constant of 121 in this particular case. If we chose a different operating point, we would have a much different constant value. So that's why we have to choose the right operating point for our problem. So, in actual fact, the transfer function and the gain of our power amp is just a number. The transfer function is 121 and the gain is 121. What could be easier? But only for very small signals around this particular operating point. So now you see things are not as bad as they seem and we'll see you in the next video.